guys, welcome to church this morning. We are so glad you're here. We hope you had an awesome Christmas. We're getting ready for New Year. We are believing this year that God is going to do incredible things with us personally in our church and with you. And so we're so glad that you joined us today. We're going to have a couple things of worship and then a message. It's going to be an awesome time. So make sure you turn your volume up and you're singing out loud on your couch at home. Like I said, we want to celebrate the great things that God has done, but also look forward to the great things God will do. So let's sing the song, Great Things. Come let us worship our King And come let us bow at His feet He has done great things And see what our Savior has done And see how His love overcomes He has done great things And He has done great things
joining Orlando Baptist Church, we hope that you and your family had a beautiful Christmas together. And as we gather at home today and just take a Sunday of rest and spending time together with one another, we hope you enjoy this worship service as we end this year just reflecting on God's goodness and looking forward to all that will come in the next year here in the life of our church. Um, so we can't wait to worship with you even from home this morning. I want to say a special good morning to all of my OBC kids out there that are watching from home. So I hope you had a great Christmas and Miss Sarah can't wait to see you in OBC Kids next Sunday. As we end this season of giving and as we've been giving to so many people in our lives, we pray that you'll just stay faithful in your tithes and offerings as we end this year, just giving back to God um, when he's so richly given to us. You can still give online using our Church Center app and uh, we can't wait to see you again in person next week, but let's worship together. So this next year in 2024, if you're trying to build anything, if you're trying to accomplish anything, all your goals that you set, we want this all to be for the glory of Christ. If whatever you're doing is not for the glory of Christ and through the power of Christ, it will not last. And so with that in mind, let's sing this song. Should nothing of our efforts stand, the legacy survive, unless the does raise the house in vain its builders strive to you who boast tomorrow's gain tell me what is your life a mist that vanishes at dawn all glory be to Christ all glory be to Christ our King, all glory be to Christ, His rule and reign will ever sing, all glory be to Christ, His will be done, His kingdom come on earth as He is above. Till I lay my head, 
will sing of the goodness of God. Cause all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire and in darkest night you are close like no other. I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend, and I have lived in the goodness of God. Cause all my life you have been faithful, and all my life you have been so, so good with every Of the goodness of God. Yes. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running. Well, good morning and happy New Year's Eve to all of you uh, watching from home or maybe you're on a road trip right now watching in the car. Uh, wherever you're at, we're glad that you have joined us and we're praying for you as you head into this new year. I can't believe 2023 is already gone and 2024 is literally um, on the doorstep. And uh, as we look back on this past year and look forward to a new year. We've got a lot to be thankful for. We, we sang about it just a few moments ago, all of the great things that the Lord has done. But the reality is that there's some things that have been tough in 2023 as well. And as we look forward to 2024, um, there's some things that we're unsure about and some things that uh, we don't know what's going to happen in the coming year. And, and, uh, and so we're going to talk about all of those realities a little bit this morning as we look forward to this coming year. But I wanna share a few things that I am excited about with you, church family. Uh, next Sunday, uh, January 7th, we will kick off our 21 days of prayer as a church body. We will be coming together to focus on a time of prayer for three weeks. It'll start on Monday, January 8th, and it will end on Sunday, January 28th. We're also going to be partnering with several other churches during this 21 days of prayer. I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. So Restoration Church in Sanford will be joining us. Scent Church, which is a, a church in Longwood, will be joining us as well. Uh, our Spanish ministry will be joining us, 
joining with us in this time. And then New Creation Fellowship, uh, Pastor Recab uh, Gray, who, who preached for us last year, uh, they're downtown. And so they'll be joining with us as well. And then on the evening of Sunday, January 28th, we'll come together, uh, all of our churches combined for a special night of worship and prayer. And I promise you will want to be a part of that. I believe that God will use that in a special way in the life of, of not only our church here at Orlando Baptist Church, but all of our churches together as we, as we will spend 21 days praying together and then uh, spend the night of the 28th praying and worshiping together. Leaders from all of those churches that I just mentioned helped write the daily reflections for each of the 21 days uh, during our 21 days of prayer, we're going to be praying through the book of Ephesians, and I believe that God will use it in your life in a special way. So make plans uh, to join us during our 21 days of prayer. And I would also ask you to maybe consider, uh, is there something that, that God would call you to give up or to fast during this 21 days of prayer? Maybe it might be fasting from some kind of food, uh, maybe a partial fast. Uh, where you give up certain types of food or uh, a kind of a partial fast where you give up a certain meal in a day. Uh, maybe you might fast and give up social media or give up TV or give up some kind of entertainment, video games. I don't know what it might be, uh, but something that you would purposefully set aside and, and lay aside for the purpose of focusing on prayer and seeking the Lord's face in this new year. So I would ask you and encourage you to consider that and ask the Lord if there's something that you could fast and give up. And then if you do that, I would encourage you um, to, to tell somebody about it, not, not to brag about it, but to hold you accountable in that. And, uh, and so uh, join with others in that as we pray and fast together. Um, and so I'm going to be fasting uh, certain meals of the day during this time. Uh, of 21 days of prayer, and uh, and I'm looking forward to what God will do in this season. And again, uh, evening of the 28th, we'll join together for a time of worship and celebration and prayer. It'll be a special night together. Also, on Sunday, January 7th, we're going to be kicking off a new teaching series called Saints Together. And we're going to be looking at what the reality is. Uh, what, the, what scripture says about the reality that we are called as saints. What does it mean that you are a saint? Uh, you are a saint. It, it means that you've been sanctified, that you've been set apart, that you have been empowered for a special purpose that God has called you to. And, um, and so I believe that God will encourage us and equip us and grow us in this season. And so I'm, I'm looking forward to January I love the new year anyway. I, I look forward to Christmas being over. Uh, I love Christmas, but I look forward to the new year. I love a fresh start. I love the excitement of a new year. I love cleaning out all of the clutter uh, of, of Christmas time. If you're like me, all the Christmas decorations are already put away. You've, you've cleaned up all the trash uh, that's left over from Christmas day. I'm the dad that follows his kids around with a trash bag while they're unwrapping presents and putting everything in the trash bag. Um, man, I love a clean, fresh start that comes with a new year. And I'm praying that God will do a new thing in our lives in this new year. And so glad that you will be a part of it with us. Well, as you consider 2023, what comes to mind for you? What comes to mind for you as you look back on the past year? Uh, maybe it's been a great year for you. Maybe it's been a banner year. Maybe you're celebrating uh, something from the last year. Maybe it's been a tough year for you. And as you look back on 2023, you look back um, and you're glad to see 2023 in the shadows. Maybe for you this year, uh, you celebrated a new milestone, maybe a, a new career milestone. Maybe you got a promotion you've been praying for. Maybe you got the raise that you've been praying for. Maybe you graduated from a program that you've been in uh, as, a, as a student, as a high school student, or as a college student, or as a graduate student. Uh, maybe you got some special certification, and all those are wonderful things. 
Maybe you're celebrating some milestones in the life of your family. I know in our church, uh, there's several people who had a new baby this year and they got to celebrate Christmas with a baby in the house for the first time. And there's so many wonderful things that go with that. Some folks in our church got married this year. I, I know that some folks got engaged this year and we celebrate all those things with people. Maybe you had a, a great trip or a great vacation or some special memory that happened in the past year. I'm grateful for the time that I got to take uh, this summer. And um, Brooke and I celebrated our 20th anniversary this summer, a special milestone for us. And I got to go spend some time alone um, hiking on the Appalachian Trail, which was kind of a fun bucket list thing for me and a special time in my life. I look back on, on several things that are worth celebrating in 2023. This year in the life of our family has been a lot of firsts as well. Our oldest daughter will be our first child to graduate from high school in 2024. And man, we never thought this day would come, but here it is. And, and so in 2023, and as we head into 2024, there's lots of milestones and lots of firsts. Uh, we, we did our first college trips together and, and, uh, and we're looking at all of the application process and all of the things that go into that. Um, as parents, we're excited to, to see our oldest uh, move off into her own new life and, and uh, all that God has in store for her in the days ahead. But we're also sad uh, to see her move off as well. Um, we've had lots of moments where we've realized this is the last time we will do this as a family of six. And <laughs> um, man, those are just realities. And for you, maybe you've experienced some new realities this year. Maybe good things, maybe hard things, maybe just things. I also know that for some of you, there's been some real heartache this year. For some of you in 2023, you've lost loved ones. And it's been a difficult season in your life to see people that you love uh, gone. Some of you are uh, struggling with sickness that you were diagnosed with and 2023. And it's not going the way you hoped it would go. 2023 has been a tough year. Some of you um, have been praying for that baby to come and you're, you haven't been blessed in that way yet. Some of you maybe have been desiring to be married and you're not married yet. And 2023 has come and it's gone and it's not what you hoped it would be. And maybe you look forward and hope to the year ahead, but maybe you look forward to the year ahead and you wonder, is it ever gonna happen for me? Or is it gonna be another hard year? This morning, I wanna point our attention to one simple verse of scripture out of Romans chapter 12. It's Romans chapter 12, verse 12. And as we consider the year behind us and as we consider the year that's coming, as we consider maybe things that we can celebrate or as we consider things that have been difficult in the past year, or for most of us, it's kind of a mixed bag of both. There's been some great things and there's been some difficult things. As we consider those things, there's just a, a simple instruction by the Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 12, verse 12. Here's what it says. Romans 12, 12, rejoice in hope, be patient in affliction, be persistent in prayer. Rejoice in hope, be patient in affliction, be persistent in prayer. Let me pray. Oh God, thank you that you are a God who is faithful, that you are a God who has done great things. God, I thank you that you're also a God who is with us in the midst of the difficult seasons of life, that you're a God who is near to the brokenhearted. And so these instructions from your word for us today, Lord, they, they apply to us. We can rejoice in hope. We can rejoice in all of the wonderful, great things that you've done and the wonderful, great things that we know that you will do in the days ahead. Lord, we can also be patient, wait, on you during these seasons of tribulation, affliction, hardship, because you're faithful, because you're with us. 
And in all of it, Lord, we can be persistent in prayer, knowing that you hear us and you have made a way for us to take not only our triumphs, but our tragedies to you through prayer. And so, Lord, help us as we look at this passage to be reminded of who you are, of the hope that we have, and of the comfort that we have through your presence and your truth in our lives. Lord, help us to be a people who bring all of those things to you in prayer. So speak to us through your word, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, maybe there has been a lot of rejoicing for you, as we talked about in the past year. Uh, maybe as you think over 2023, it's more rejoicing than being patient. You've rejoiced in hope. A few weeks ago, Corey reminded us uh, in our Advent series, he talked about joy and, and the fact that this, this word rejoice is the kind of active verb form of the word joy. Be joyous, rejoice. And as a people, as Christians, we are called to be joyful people. After all, Scripture says that the joy of the Lord is our strength. And in the book of Philippians, the Apostle Paul tells us, rejoice in the Lord always. And I'll say it again, rejoice. We are called to be a rejoicing people. We are called to be a joyful people. It's one of the things that should characterize our lives as the fruit of the Spirit is growing in us. Joy. We're called to rejoice. And we can rejoice. And in the coming year, there will be seasons of rejoicing for you. Maybe for some of us, it's easier to rejoice in hope right now. We can rejoice in all of the things that are happening right now in our lives. Maybe we've been in a season of rejoicing. And man, praise God for that reality. But we're not just called to rejoice in hope in this passage. We're also called to be patient in affliction. Affliction is quite a word. <laughs> to be afflicted is, is not just a, a, an annoyance. It's not just a, a difficulty. Affliction is, is this idea of, of, of really being grieved, of, of being hard-pressed, of, of carrying around um, grief and, and sadness and, uh, and the reality of, of a broken world and, and a, a broken heart and a broken situation. Uh, in our lives, but we're called to be patient in this season of affliction. I don't know about you, but that's hard to do for me. In those difficult seasons, it's hard to, to, to be patient because we want to get through it as quick as we can. We want the answers. We want to know how this thing is going to end, and maybe for some of you in 2023, you've been in a season of waiting and difficulty, and you don't know how it's going to end, and you still don't know how it's going to end, and I want to encourage you to be patient. The book of Lamentations in the Old Testament is, uh, the word lamentation literally means weeping. It's, it's a, a book that's full of these weeping, lamenting prayers to God. The writer of the book of Lamentations faces all of these difficulties and pours out his heart to God. And then in Lamentations chapter 3, verse, 20, 20, verse 22 through 26, it's a familiar verse of scripture. He, he says, it is because of the Lord's mercies or his faithful love that we do not perish or that we are not consumed. In the middle of, of the affliction, in the middle of the difficulty, he calls this to mind. It is because of the Lord's mercies that we do not perish. His mercies are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. We can say the Lord is our portion. But he goes on and he says we can put our hope in him for the Lord is good to those who wait on him. This idea of, of patience is really this idea of waiting. The Lord is good to those who wait on him, to the person 
who seeks him. Part of this idea of waiting on God is, is seeking God. It's seeking his answers. It's seeking his compassion. It's seeking his presence. Down in verse 33, Lamentations chapter 3, verse 31, it says this, The Lord will not reject us forever. Even if he causes suffering, he will show compassion according to the abundance of his faithful love. We're called to rejoice in hope, and, and that sounds easy to do. But we're also called to be patient in affliction. And maybe right now you're in this season of patiently waiting. How do we do that? How can we be patient in affliction? Well, this verse also gives us the answer to that. Rejoice in hope, be patient in affliction, and then be persistent in prayer. How do we wait? How do, how do we patiently wait for God in these seasons of affliction? We, we do it through prayer. We do it through pouring out our heart to God by calling on him. He's the one who hears us. He's the one who answers us. He's the one who sees us in our season of difficulty. But I also love it in Romans chapter 12, right at the beginning. So I read verse 12 that tells us to rejoice and to be patient and to persistently pray. But verse 1 tells us, Therefore, brothers and sisters, in view of the mercies of God, I urge you to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true worship. This chapter, before it tells us to rejoice in hope and to be patient in affliction and to be persistent in prayer, it starts off by pointing us to the mercies of God. And as we look back on the past year, I hope you can see the mercies of God in the times of rejoicing, in the times of celebration, in the times of triumph, that you can see that it was God's hand that guided you, that you can see that it was God's faithfulness that provided for you, that you can see that it was God's direction that, that led you. And I hope that you can also see that in the seasons of affliction, in the seasons of, of difficulty, in the seasons of questioning, that you can see God is the one who was faithfully there, holding you together when everything else was falling apart, that God truly was near to you in your season of brokenheartedness, that God truly has compassion for you, that God's presence is a reality for you, that you really can come boldly before the throne of grace to receive mercy and grace in your time of need. In light and view of, because of the mercies of God, we really can rejoice in hope and we can be patient and affliction. And then we can be persistent in prayer because we know that God is a God who hears us. And this year, I, I'm praying, I'm asking that God would do a new work in our hearts through prayer. That God would do a, a new work in our hearts as a church body. You see, these verses in Romans chapter 12 are not verses that are written for us as individuals. Of course, there's an individual application for us, but these are verses that are written to the body of Christ together, the people of God together. In Romans chapter 12, um, verse four, it says this, now, we, uh, now as we have many parts in one body and all parts do not have the same function in the same way, we who are many are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. So here's the beauty of the church. As we are rejoicing in hope and as we are patiently enduring affliction, we can do it together. We can rejoice together. We can walk through hardship together. And I hope you've experienced that this year too. I hope you've been able to celebrate wonderful moments with your church body and, and, and with 
uh, brothers and sisters in Christ. And as you've walked through the deepest, darkest moments, I hope you've been able to do it with brothers and sisters in the body of Christ. That's what Romans chapter 12 is all about. We are one body and members of one another. So it calls us to love one another in verse 9. Calls us in verse 12 as we read, rejoice, be patient, persistent in prayer. And then verse 15 tells us this, rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Even as we're called to rejoice in hope and to be patient in affliction, we're also called to rejoice with others and to be patient and even to weep with others as they walk through the difficult seasons of life. And how do we do that? Once again, we do that through prayer. And this year, I am praying that God does a new work in the life of our church through prayer. One of the things that brings me the most joy as a pastor is when I see you guys praying with each other and praying for each other. When, when, I, when I see you serving each other, when I hear stories about how you shared a meal with somebody who lost a loved one or you, you shared a meal with somebody who was going through a season of, of sickness or, or medical difficulty, going through treatment for cancer, when you visited somebody in the hospital, when, when you showed up, that's, that's what this passage is about. And this year I'm praying that God would do a new work of that in our hearts and lives. I'm praying on Sunday mornings as we gather that we would see in a new way what it means to rejoice with those who rejoice and to weep with those who weep. That we would really live out and model that, that we can rejoice in hope, that we can be patient in affliction, that we can be persistent in prayer, and that all those things go together at the same time in one body as we gather together as God's people, as the seasons of life ebb and flow, as we experience new things together, as we experience new highs together and new lows together. No doubt in the coming year, we will celebrate new births, we will celebrate new marriages in the life of this church, and we will see people go home to be with the Lord as they leave this earth and breathe their next breath on the other side of heaven. That's just the reality of the world that we live in. We will see people who are diagnosed with sickness. We will see people endure and walk through difficult seasons. We will see marriages restored, but we will also see marriages that seem to fall apart. We will see ups and downs. We will see highs and lows. But as a church, we're called to see those things through together, to rejoice with those who rejoice, to weep with those who weep, to rejoice in hope, be patient in affliction, and be persistent in prayer. And so this year, I want to encourage you. How do we do that together? How, how do we do that together in a more meaningful way? And so I would ask you even today to begin praying and asking God to help you rejoice with others, to, to weep with others and walk through hard times with others. Even now as I'm, as I'm talking, there are people coming to your mind, people that you know you need to be praying for, people that you that you, you know things that are going on in their life, I would encourage you, even in this moment, shoot somebody a text and just say, I'm praying for you. I can tell you in my life, when I receive texts from people that just say, I'm praying for you, man, that does wonders for me. God uses that. That is ministry. The, the ministry of sending a text is a powerful ministry. When, when people come and ask me how they can pray for me, that's ministry. How can you ask people this year, how can I pray for you? When you pray for people, and don't just say I'm praying for you, but you pray for them out loud in their presence. Man, that is powerful ministry. I'm praying that God would grow us in those things this year. And so as we're sitting here, it's New Year's Eve. And I, I hope you're doing some reflecting as you look back on the good times and you look back on the difficulties, as you look forward and hope uh, for better days in the coming year. 
I want to encourage you with the words of Paul to rejoice in hope, to be patient in affliction, and to do it all by being persistent in prayer. So let's rejoice together. Let's endure together. Let's pray together as a church. I'm asking the Lord that 2024 would be a new year of of powerful prayer in the life of our church, not as individuals, but as one body praying together, as the saints of Jesus Christ um, together. So let me pray. God, we love you. Thank you for this time. Thank you for another new year. God, thank you that you have walked with us through the victories and the valleys of the past year. And God, I pray for those who are walking into 2024 with a heavy heart, not knowing what's coming. Lord, I pray that they would experience the reality of your comforting presence, your Holy Spirit, but that they would also experience the reality of the support and love and encouragement of your people. And God, I pray for those who look forward to the coming year with hope and anticipation at great things to come. Lord, I I pray that we would would hope and anticipate and rejoice with them every step of the way as they look forward to new milestones, that we would pray for them and rejoice with them in the days ahead. And Lord, let it all be done in an attitude of prayer. What a privilege it is that we can come to you the one who hears us, the one who answers us, the one who has the power to move, to change, to restore, to redeem, to heal. And so we come to you rejoicing, waiting, and praying. We love you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Well, happy new year. Happy 2024. We'll see you on Sunday, January 7th, as we kick off our new series, Saints Together. We'll also be celebrating communion on that day. Uh, It'll be a special time in the life of our church. We'll kick off 21 days of prayer. Lots of good stuff coming up. Church, I love you. We'll see you then. All right, let's worship our King. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquer the grave. You free every captive and break every chain. You have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awaken alive. Oh, Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh, God, you have done great things. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah, God, above it all. Wonderful New Year's, and we will see you next week. Have a good one.